Peace the Lord be with you. So with you. Good morning and welcome to St. Peter's as we celebrate the third Sunday in Advent. If you're doing your math in your head, you're right. It's about a week and a half until Christmas. It's coming up really quick. Uh, but we still have lots of time to worship, lots of time to be in God's Word, and lots of time to be in service to others in the world, and that's what we're here for. So uh, welcome to St. Peter's again. Welcome to our members. Welcome to our guests. Uh, everything is printed in the worship folder for you for the service, and it is also projected on the wall behind me. Let's see. Is there anything else I need to say? No. So having said that, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, it is a great day. Uh, a great day to be here in this place that you have prepared for us. We know that you are with us everywhere we are, but we come here with the expectation that we can set aside the things of the world, set aside all those things that are bothering us, the trials, the temptations, the tribulations, and focus on you, you and your word for us, you and your son who was given to us in order that we might have eternal life. We have hope, we have joy, we have peace, Help us to rejoice each day as the children of God we are. We ask all these things in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All righty. Um, we're going to begin on page four with Arise, O Christian People. And I didn't think about this till just now. I'm going to ask you to stand. seems kind of silly to sit and sing a song that says Arise. So stand if you will. If you don't feel like standing, you can wait till the hymn is over.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Behold, the true light has come into the world. Let us enter into his presence, confessing our sins and receiving his forgiveness. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, hear us as we confess the darkness of our waywardness and sin, especially our... To all who receive him, he makes to be the children of God. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, excuse me, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Let your light scatter the darkness and illumine your church. We're going to sing stanzas one, two, and three of We Light the Advent Candle. Continue to bottom of page 6, carrying over to page 7, the Kyrie. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship, and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Continue with the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. Please be seated. Do we have any children? Yep, we do. Good, good, good. I have my official pointers in the back. That is so good to have.
The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 61. The Messiah will come and bring good news and everlasting joy. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to pro proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of prisons to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant those who mourn Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of faint spirit, and they may be called oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that may be glorified, they shall build up the ancient ruins, they shall raise up the former devastations, they shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice, I hate robbery and wrong. I will faithfully give them recompense, I will make an everlasting covenant with them. The offspring shall be known among the nations and their descendants in the midst of the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them, and they are the offspring the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with beautiful headdress, and the bride adorns himself with jewels, for as the earth brings forth sprouts, and as the garden causes what is sown up to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all nations. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading for today is from 1 Thessalonians. Paul instructs us to rejoice always. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything, hold fast what is good, abstain from everything of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit and a soul body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you faithful, he will surely do it. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with the reading of the Holy Gospel, beginning in the middle of page 9. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. This is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Then why are you baptizing if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know, even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. We're going to continue on page 10 with On Jordan's Bank, the Baptist Cry. And then at the end of stanza four, I will ask you to rise.
in every place. Freeze rise. Grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. It's interesting because I can't recall a time in my 59 years I was able to do that. Okay? I even tried this morning in the garage so my wife couldn't see me. Fortunately, I did not fall and hurt myself. I was very careful, but I can't do that. Obviously, this person is very excited. And I was, uh, I'll take you back to the Old Testament for just a second before we move on. The last part of the reading from Isaiah chapter 61, beginning in verse 10, I will... Rejoice! I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, or as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. I love this here. I could stop right here if I wanted to. He says, I will rejoice, greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God. And he gives the reason why we rejoice and exult. He says, for he, that is God, has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. That is the very reason we get excited. It's not because we belong to St. Peter's or we're Lutherans or whatever else it is you might think about, it's because we belong to God, and he has saved us. Even though we are not worthy, we are worthy of nothing, but he is the eternal punishment and even death, but he has saved us. So as I thought about this, there are words that through the years uh, have kind of dropped off. Of course, there's new words that come on in person worship. Uh, never thought I'd hear that. Uh, but uh, some words have dropped off or changed their meaning. Some have dropped off probably altogether. So I had to stop and think about it. I don't know in 59 years if I've ever used myself the word rejoice. I can't ever recall being at a birthday party and getting gifts and go, I rejoice, I've got what I wanted. No, it's, that's not what comes out of my mouth. I think the problem is, is, or the situation is, we have the feelings, we're excited, we are very excited, it's the strong feeling of joy or excitement, that's what the definition is, and we have those feelings, but we just don't use the word rejoice. We may sing it sometimes in the hymns, but I, again, in 59 years, I don't know that I've ever run across anybody who was, re who was using the word rejoice in a sentence. But we have those feelings, don't we? You've heard me talk about it. When my mama was making cake, I rejoiced that I was going to get some of the cake batter. That's what the feeling was. I didn't tell my mom, I'm rejoicing because you're doing this. She could see it written all over my face. I was drooling. I was happy. My eyes were lit up. I was rejoicing inside. And we do this a lot of other times in the world, but the problem in the world is, is we have more despair than we have joy, right? That's easy for me to say coming up on the end of 2020 one of the worst years that have ever existed, probably, at least for this country, and maybe for the entire world. 
You look around you and you see more frowns than you see smiles. You see more people depressed than happy. We are losing our joy and Christians are falling into the same trap. We're letting the world oppress us into taking away our joy. And the world cannot take away our joy. As a kid, I used to take the other children's toys. It was easy because I was bigger than they were in the situations that we were involved. I would take their stuff. But nobody can take your joy. You give it up. You give it up. You relinquish the joy because you don't want to believe in the promise or you don't want to hold fast to the promise. You just want to let it go and be like everybody else and be just depressed and downbeaten and in despair. And it's easy. Loved ones are locked behind doors and you can't see them. Some have not been seen for almost a year now. It's depressing for the person in the situation and it's depressing for the family outside desperately wanting to see the person inside. Where is the joy in that? And there is none. Again, we need to remember the focus. The focus is not on the here and now and what we're experiencing. The focus is on what's to come and what has already been done for you. That's where the joy is at. And up until 2020, there were lots of other things. You know, you might be joyful that uh, your husband goes to the doctor to get that visit you've been nagging him to get. And then that turns to despair when he comes home and says, I have Alzheimer's or I have, you know, stage four cancer or something. It's easy for the world, it's easy for Satan to snatch away our joy because we turn loose of it. We let go of it. We don't fight for it. God says, I want you to be joyful. He says, Paul says, and they're writing to the church at Thessalonica, and what he's done in the first parts of this chapter, he has told them, reminded them of the wonderful gift they have in Jesus Christ as their Savior and the days coming when the Savior will come back, that final day, that judgment day, and those in Christ will be taken to heaven. They will spend eternity rejoicing. We'll probably use that word in heaven, along with propitiation and a couple other words we don't use here. But we're going to get to go to heaven. And so he's reminding them, this is what you're looking forward to. And then as he gets to the middle part and right what we're doing, have talked about this morning, he's reminding them how to be leaders in the church. He's not just talking about the president and the vice president and the head elder and things like that. He's talking about the people individually being leaders in the church and being leaders in the world for the church. And those are the, the, these are the three key things he gives them. Rejoice always. And there's no asterisk here anywhere. Rejoice always. I think it says pray without ceasing or unceasingly and give thanks. And all of those are impacted by the world when we let them. If we're not rejoicing, if we're not happy about who we are as children of God, we're not going to be praying a lot. And if we're not praying a lot, we're not going to be giving thanks a lot because we don't see any reason to give thanks. And yet we have the greatest reason to give thanks. Jesus Christ, our Savior, gave his life and rose again for you and for me, and he didn't have to. He wanted to. That should cause joy. Yes, there's lots of things around us that cause us to de can cause us to despair. Lots of things that are not good and not happy. And yet, we need to pick up the stick, the ball, and we need to move forward as we've been called to do. And we need to rejoice. I used to joke, you've heard me say this before COVID, uh, I've seen people despair at the pump because cast went up a nickel. You know, that's the end of their world. I'm not sure if that was being, they were being serious or not. There's all kinds of things that happen, and everything happens for a reason, and God is in control. Lots of people, young people, were in despair uh, when President Trump won the election and Hillary Clinton did not. Still can't figure that out because I've seen several presidents in my lifetime. I didn't like them all, but I don't think I ever skipped a beat. Still did what I needed to do, went on with my life. And there will be a lot of despair come... January or whatever, when President Biden is brought in. But we're missing the point. God's in control. For whatever reason, he wants him in place and his vice president. And we need to be joyful that our God still loves us and cares for us. And no matter what happens, no matter what happens, on that day, we're going to stand before 
our God and Creator, and our Savior is going to stand between us and Him and say, this one is mine. I paid the price for his or her sins. This one is mine. That's why we have joy. It's not because we've got the tree up and it's decorated already. Not because we're going to get the gifts, get the gifts we want for Christmas or get to eat what we want to eat for Christmas. The joy is because Christ has done it all for you and for me and he continues to do he has promised if you come to him in prayer, whether it's all the time or not, if you come to him in prayer and lay your stuff, your baggage at his feet and leave it, that's the hard part, leave it, he will scoop it up and deal with it. And you are free to go about your way rejoicing, praying continuously, and giving thanks. I looked it up in the Bible. There's about 22, or 22 references to rejoicing or rejoice. The one that comes to mind and is in that list is when uh, the eunuch was traveling. You remember the story. Philip was out doing his thing, and the Holy Spirit says, Nope, you need to go over here. So Philip goes over there. And then the Holy Spirit says, You see that guy in the chariot? Yep, you need to go and run beside him. So he goes over there. And this eunuch is reading through the scriptures, and uh, they start a little chit-chat can't imagine a guy riding in a chariot another guy running alongside it seems kind of weird but you know it's kind of like a dog chasing a car but anyway so but the eunuch at some point asks him to come up and he says i don't understand this somebody needs to explain it to me and Philip goes oh i can explain it to you and he does and wonder beyond wonders we should never wonder at what our god does because he has these things he does these things for a reason they get to the end of the explanation the guy says the eunuch says i believe and Eunuch looked and he says, there's water. What's to keep me from being baptized? And Philip, being a good disciple, says, absolutely nothing. We can baptize you. Boom. They go down to the water. They baptize the eunuch. And this is the part I always love. God always does this. The eunuch comes up out of the water. He's baptized. And Philip disappears. Just like in Star Wars or Star Trek. Boom. He's gone. And what does the eunuch do? The eunuch doesn't despair, thinking he's lost everything because he lost his buddy, his translator. The eunuch goes away rejoicing that he is a child of God. And that's what you and I are called to do in these scriptures. It's not to worry about the things of the world. Yes, there are things we can do. You can get your shots. You can wash your hands. You can do all the things the world tells you to do. You can drive the proper speed limit. You can do all those things. But some things you have no control over. You can vote and cast your vote, but in the end, God's going to get what he wants. And it's not for us to throw a temper tantrum and a pity party and sit back and go, I ain't doing nothing else because I didn't get what I want. We rejoice that every single day the God that created the entire universe and that includes us loves me enough to send his son into the world to die for me. That's why I'm happy. That's why I can go to uh, certain people's homes where they like to serve peas and celery and carrots, and I can put a smile on my face and have a good conversation and still go away and be happy, not because there were peas were piled in front of me, but because Jesus loves me. And the Bible says this too shall pass. It will. We cling to God. We cling to the promises he gives us. We cling to the hope not of the things of this world. We are not afraid, as Psalm 91 says, of the arrows or the pestilence or the COVID or anything else. That's not in 91. Pestilence, I translate that as COVID. We cling to his promises and his promises, I am, all, I am with you always. I never leave you. I never abandon you. You are never alone. And he also says that I am the biggest, I am the baddest guy in the universe, in the world ever existed, and I am for you. So nobody can truly be against you. Yeah, they can annoy you, they can make your life miserable, but I win in the end, he says. And the greatest promise of all, that if you believe in my son Jesus Christ as your Savior, and you die, you are going to live again. Rejoice. You know, I don't like it when they start playing Christmas songs in August. Seems like they did that this year. I'm sure it wasn't August. It was probably October. That brings me down. But then I remember the real reason for Christmas is Jesus. It's not about the songs. It's not about the gifts. It's not about the shopping. It's about my Lord and Savior. That's what we cling to. And that's in the face of everything. Again, death, 
uh, destruction, calamity, natural disasters, all of it. We rejoice that God loves us. We give thanks. We pray for the people around us, and we give thanks for the opportunities we have. And you have lots of them. You have lots of reasons to rejoice. Let the Lord deal with your pain. And he will. And you're still going to have that pain. You can rejoice and have pain. Like the gentlemen, well, seven of them, floating in the Bering Sea, and they were calling out. They were almost succumbed to hypothermia, probably would have died, uh, but the Lord kept them alive. And one of them shouted out the Bible verse from Psalm 118, verse 24. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. If he can say that bobbing around in the ocean almost to death, then I think each and one of, every one of us can do it when we face the things of this world. The Lord made this day. He has a purpose. His purpose is not to hurt you. His purpose is not to make your life miserable. But his purpose is that you would be an example to the people around you so that they can be engaged by the one true God and so that they can become a saved individual and they can become a part of the family of God and God's kingdom can be enlarged. That's your purpose. And you should joyfully get up every morning, backache and all, and say, Lord, here I am. Put me to work. I'm going to give you my pain. Give me your joy. I'm going to give you all my dirtiness. Give me your righteousness. And I'm going to go forth into the world and I'm going to tell people there's a difference. There's a difference because of the one true God, His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and your minds through your faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All righty. Let's see if my memory is still working. Yes. Okay, so we're going to sing stanzas one and two of uh, Hear the Pennies Dropping, and then we will receive the givings back and proceed with the rest of the service. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for this day and we do rejoice. Part of our rejoicing is to come and to bring gifts back to the altar. We bring gifts of time, talent, treasure, and technology. Gifts that you have loaned to us. They're not ours. You've loaned them to us so that we can rejoice each day and carry out the tasks you have before us. You equip us, you empower us, and make us ready for what we need to do. We pray, O oh Lord, that we would always give you the praise, honor, and glory, for you alone are deserving, you alone are worthy, you and you alone are God. Amen. Please rise. We continue as we confess our beliefs as found in the Apostles' Creed, beginning near the bottom of page 12, carrying over to page 13. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the Holy Christian Church throughout the world and for all who confess the name of Christ, that God guard and defend us from all temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Matthew, our Synod President, Alan, our District President, for all pastors and servants of Christ, that they proclaim the, with faithfulness and clarity 
the true light of the gospel in all they do. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the government and all who have been set into positions of leadership, that they use the authority entrusted to them honorably and for the good of all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who suffer from hunger, homelessness, poverty, or unemployment, that God's great mercy and love preserve and relieve them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are sick, that God grant healing to their bodies and strength to bear their infirmities with patience and grace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who rejoice in the rich blessings of God, that they always remember the giver of every gift and give him heartfelt thanks, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And I have to admit, I have left out the uh, Pax, the kiss of, of peace. So, the peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. So rejoice and turn to someone near you and extend the peace of the Lord to them. If both of you are okay, you can bump fists or elbows. Please, no heads. Yeah, I'm only. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. My wife disrupted me. Prayer of thanksgiving. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation. You have made, have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. You sent John the Baptist to prepare the way for our Savior, by whose sacrifice of his blood and death on a cross, all who are baptized in him are enabled by his Spirit worthily to repent and receive forgiveness of sins and life everlasting. Grant that we may faithfully eat his body and drink, drink of his blood, and so proclaim his death until he comes again in glory. Amen. Continue with the words of our Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup, and after supper, when he had given thanks after supper, he, uh, he took the cup also after supper, when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, Drink of it all of you, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do in remembrance, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be.
God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with our mission outreach prayer. As you say this prayer, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you the name and face of someone specific whom the Lord may touch through you. Together, Lord, lay some soul upon my heart and love that soul through me, and may I ever do my part to win that soul for thee. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Please be seated. We're going to continue with number 921 on what has now been sown near the bottom of page 18. Again, welcome to our guests, welcome to our members. We are moving very quickly to uh, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. Um, I see here, Marcia, you recently celebrated a birthday, is that correct? Yes. Happy birthday to you, Marcia, Mike, Sell. Anybody else this past week celebrate a birthday that we missed? Alrighty, I think we could sing happy birthday to Marcia. Uh, Marilyn? Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Marcia. May Jesus bless you. There we go. It's always somebody. Uh, anybody anniversary we missed? I don't see any. Okay. So, um, I will, my safety message for the week, if you feel like rejoicing, you may not want to do this. Okay. If you do, make sure you have somebody spotting you. Otherwise, it might be not pretty. Um, let's see. Um, okay, so it is with a deep regret that I, I tell you this morning that the special assembly scheduled for next Sunday will not take place. We have canceled that assembly. Uh, I am also uh, want to apologize to you and ask for your forgiveness. As your pastor, I let the weight of the world 
uh, cloud my vision when we were trying to make decisions on what to do here in this congregation. I am human. I make mistakes. You've been very graceful, and I appreciate that. So having said that, we are going to move forward as we are right now. The situation that you're all aware of, mask versus non-mask, is still being uh, debated and dealt with. We take everything seriously. Uh, nobody is taking this lightly. Uh, also, just so you know, the 7 o'clock service, the candlelight service on Christmas Eve, will be mass recommended or required, whatever the word is we're using. We're trying not to use mandated. So that will be a mass service, the 7 o'clock. The other two will be optional. Um, I would encourage you, and I think I've said this before. If I haven't, that is my fault as well, and I apologize and forgive me. But we, as we move forward into this and continue to move through this, Something that we should always have been doing, we need to do more of and do a better job now, and that's respecting the people around us. Uh, if a person wants to wear a mask, please let them wear the mask. Uh, if a person doesn't want to shake hands, please do not try to shake their hand. If a person doesn't want to be hugged, please don't hug them. Uh, we need to respect people's uh, situation in this. Everybody is taking it differently. Uh, nobody's taking it the same. But it is something that we do need to consider, so please remember that. Uh, the person you're uh, extending the peace to, the person you're fellowshipping with, whatever, please remember that they may not be as comfortable as you are. Uh, let them do what they need to do, and that person, please let the other people do what they need to do. We are here to worship. We are not here to pass judgment on anybody or to make anybody feel uncomfortable. Uh, but uh, we do need to be aware of the situation, and we are, as your elders and your leadership and myself, we are trying to deal with it. So uh, please continue to pray for us as we meet and deal with these things. Uh, again, we don't take them lightly. But I am very thankful and very rejoiced, well, not so far, joyful I guess is the word, that we have been back in worship since the 31st of May, almost six months now, and we have not had a single case of COVID either started in this congregation or distributed in this congregation. And that is something that I am very amazed at, I'm very thankful for, uh, and so please continue to do what you're doing because it seems to be working. But we are called to worship. We are called to be here. And uh, as you have heard me recite many times out of many Bible verses, we're not, we're not concerned when we're here necessarily about what's going on in the rest of the world. We are here to focus on our Lord and what he has for us. When we go back out in the world, we do the things we have to do, and we try to follow his guidance. But when we're here, we're focused on him. So please... Try to remember that, okay? So, as we go forward, uh, we will have a midweek service on Wednesday night. We will have service next Sunday, no meeting. And then uh, we will have Advent service that Wednesday. And then Thursday night, Christmas Eve, three services, all candlelight, 4, 7, and 11. You're invited to come to any or all of them. They will all three be different sermons. Uh, the music might be a little like the same, but the sermons will all be different. Uh, and of course, like I said, 7 o'clock, we are asking people to wear a mask. So, having said that, uh, when we get done here and go out, uh, we are going into the, if you want, we're going to the fellowship hall to uh, continue adult uh, Bible study. We have finished baptism. Yay! That doesn't mean we're done with baptism. We finished that section. And now we're moving into one that, as we all know, is a topic of conversation for many people, and that's communion. So, if you want to know more about communion over the next I'm hoping the next five to six weeks, it might be three or four months, but we hope not. So anyway, we can talk about communion and delve into God's word for that. So having said that, as you kind of get up and maybe skip and rejoice out of the sanctuary, you are going to go out into this area and you are going to enter the mission field. And I want you to put a smile on your face. Your back may hurt, you may have issues in your life, but you are a child of God. Act like a child of God. Act like a person who believes in the empty tomb and tell people there's a difference. Yes, you can be upset with political issues, but you can still love your Lord and you can still love your neighbor. So go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'll try to skip, but I don't know if I can skip. <laughs>